Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. I am doing a little like kind of mini video special um, to show the difference between different types of wasps. I'm getting a lot in the comments, um, a lot of confusion about what certain species are and what it, how they constitute as wasps while also being a particular subspecies as i.e. hornet, yellow jacket, cicada killer, mud dauber, etc. Um, so I kind of just want to break that down and explain. So wasp is the family. That's, that's the family of what these creatures are. So a hornet, a yellow jacket, a cicada killer, a mud dauber, they are all wasps. Wasp is a blanket term that covers all of those species. So wasp is the family. Yellow jacket is a layman's term for hundreds of different kinds of subspecies. However, yellow jacket refers to a specific kind of subspecies. So, eastern yellow jacket, which is Vespula maculifrons, um, Dolico Vespula maculata, that's a bald faced hornet, or a yellow jacket, it's an aerial nest building yellow jacket. Um, Vespula pennsylvanica, which is a, another type of yellow jacket. Any, any name or any species that has Vespula in it is a yellow jacket. Any species that has Vespa in it is a hornet. So Vespa crabro, which is one we all know, which is the European hornet. Um, European hornet is another just kind of a goofy layman's term because in Europe they have all kinds of hornets. So European hornet doesn't make much sense to them. So I get that a lot in the comments. Like we know that as a, as a um, European wasp or whatever. So there's a lot of layman's terms, depending on what region you're in, there's a lot of names. So even like um, some people over in, um, a lot of my viewers over in Europe are saying that um, the uh, Vespula germanica or the German yellow jacket over to them is the common wasp. And that is, if you Google common wasp, there's, a, there's I mean, depending on what image you look at, that's the other thing is Google is great for information, but it doesn't always give you the most accurate information. So a lot of people have photos and they call them a specific species, but they're not really that species. So you got to really watch and really have an eye for what you're looking at species wise. Um, so I'm going to go over a couple of them here, a couple of the different wasps and have you guys look and see the difference and, and what it actually means to be a hornet, yellow jacket or whatever. Um, and just something also to note is a hornet, and a yellow jacket are not the same thing. However, they are both wasps. So they're in the same family, but they're not the same. So someone asked why the bald-faced hornet is referred to as the bald-faced hornet, if it's not really a hornet. And I always, whenever I have this conversation with people, it's the same thing as if you say, how can we call Native Americans Indians? Well, it's because someone messed up a long time ago and called them that, and now everybody calls them that. It's an easy term for me to refer to them as in my videos, so you'll still see me use it, bald-faced hornet, because everybody knows what a bald-faced hornet is, for the most part, except for they don't know it's a wasp or a yellow jacket. Um, so I use that term just because that's how other people know them. If I were to call them Dolica vespula maculata, people like, well, you know, it wouldn't come up in search results and people wouldn't know that that's what I'm referring to. And then I would get bombarded in the comments saying, that's not that, it's a bald-faced hornet. Okay, well... Bald-faced hornet is really just um, looking at what it is, what it looks like. It has a white face compared to a black body, so you know whoever came up with that term called it a bald-faced hornet, or a bull hornet was another one that I've heard. Also, black jacket, white-faced hornet. There's all kinds of different Nate layman's terms, but oops, but the real name for them is Dulica vespula maculata, which is an aerial nest building yellow jacket. So let's get to it. I have my my smaller camera, which is actually just a phone, this is what I've filmed all of, it's not, it's in poor shape. This is what I filmed all of my previous year's 2018 removals with. So all these videos of me doing this and the shaky shots and things was with this wonderful little phone. It's, I've replaced the motherboard in it a couple times and I've replaced the camera in it a couple times. I'm not ready to give up on it yet. So even though it looks like death, it's almost unchristian to get rid of it. So. I'll use this. This has a great camera to zoom with, and um, I'll even film me filming it, so that way you kind of get um, me in the shots, because we want this face on the video. So let's get to it. Alright, so the first one I have here is a yellow jacket, 
and it's called Vespula pensylvanica, also known as the Western Yellow Jacket, layman's term. Um, so this this species is one that often will nest in uh, um, like cavities and things. So like you'll see this one in houses. Uh, see the by the back here. That's maybe. So you can identify this one. Almost looks like the German yellow jacket because it has the dots that go down the sides. But there are a lot of subspecies of yellow jacket that have the dots that go down the side. So let's look at the, this is actually the queen. So this is a worker here. This is a worker and that's the queen. So the queen, you can see her spots a little better. And you see she has like, almost like an octagon up top here. And then she has the point system that goes down along with the dots that go down along the side on both sides. Um, but a good way to identify, first of all, for the for the Western Yellow Jacket, they have a, the dark black band here. So the German Yellow Jacket has similar markings, but it doesn't have that black band. It's a really thin band there. Um, see if I can get where her face would be up. Whoops. So the other identifier for the Western Yellow Jacket is the face. And you can see the dots in the middle of her face, that's one identifier for the western yellow jacket. Um, and then also how the colors of yellow go on either side of her eyes at the top. So there's the large uh, simple eyes, and then, or the compound eyes, and then there's three simple eyes. And then around the compound eyes there's yellow markings. So that's one way to identify the um, western yellow jacket. Um, all right, so let me zoom in here on this. Okay. So next we have bald-faced hornet, or the yellow jacket, aerial nest building yellow jacket also known as Delo or Delica Vespula Maculata, um, White Faced Hornet, Black Jacket, all those fun names. So you can see these are just workers. Uh, now this is a queen for this. I'm trying to do a side-by-side -side comparison of the workers and of the, uh, and of the um, mainly just the workers, just because I don't have queens of each one of them. Um, so this, and you get a good glimpse of that stinger there too. Alright, bear with me as I get these in focus. Um, so this, right here's the stinger for this one. Look at that thing, it's a monster. That go, that's almost like an eighth of an inch long. Um, so these guys, they have similar markings as, as the German Yellow Jacket and the Western Yellow Jacket. So he's got the dots going down the side. Um, Females have, people ask me about males and to females, females of the bald-faced hornet have three stripes that go down their abdomen, males have four. Males also have an extra segment in their abdomen, uh, which makes their abdomen look longer, which it is longer. And let's see if we can get a good image of the face here. Which is what makes the bald-faced hornet the bald-faced hornet, right? I'm going to have to splice all this out. Spin you around there. Oh, I thought she was missing a mandible. Alright, so this is the face of the bald-faced hornet. So why it's called the bald-faced hornet is because it's got a face that looks bald. Because it's, the rest of the body is black for the most part. And it's got this white-faced or white-faced hornet. Or black jacket as opposed to yellow jacket. So another interesting thing, I don't know if I can zoom in far enough. 
or the feet. You can kind of see the hooks on the feet. Interesting creature. So that's it for the bald faced hornet. Now I do want to show um, one other monster. Now these are social wasps, meaning that they um, live in a colony. So there's a colony of many and they all work for the same purpose. But then this beautiful fella, my girlfriend here, this is a cicada killer. I often get people commenting on my European hornet video and saying, oh, that looks like a cicada killer. Well, it really doesn't. I mean, cicada killers are big, and that's really the only thing that looks, makes them look like the European hornet or Vespa crab row. All right, let's get another shot here. Look at that stinger. So that stinger there is probably about a, um, maybe like, I don't know. Let's see if we can get this one next to it. Let's see if we can compare and contrast. So this stinger is significantly longer than this one. This one's about less than an eighth of an inch. This one's almost a half an inch long. That's a monster. Uh, the faces on these guys look a little different than yellow jackets. Unfortunately, this one had its eye kind of blown out. The mandibles aren't nearly as big on this. <laughs> Come on. Just, they're very thin. They're not nearly as big as the as the uh, bald-faced hornet or the um, western yellow jacket. So these guys, they live in the ground, or they, they they make burrows in the ground, typically in like sandy soil. And what they do is they lay an egg down in there, and that larva will start to grow. So what these guys do is they go and hunt cicadas specifically, and they fly them. They they kept they sting them, paralyze them carry them back with all six legs, carry them back to the burrow, and then stuff that thing down the burrow, and then the larva eats it as they grow. It's pretty barbaric. So this is the three different species that I have here. I wish I had a little bit more. Um, I do have southern yellow jacket or eastern yellow jackets outside, but I don't have any dead ones, unfortunately, um, to do a comparison. But I'm going to keep these guys in the freezer, and when we do another video when I get some more or if I get queen of each then I can um, I can do a side-by-side -side comparison with the different species I probably won't be getting any more um, cicada killers that was really kind of a fluke removal um, but definitely more bald-faced hornets I'd like to get some German yellow jackets and some eastern yellow jackets and southern yellow jackets but at this point this is what I have in my collection and I'm gonna be trying to do a little surprise video of a casting. I want to cast these guys in acrylic so that way people can, or epoxy, so that way people can um, can see them kind of in their attack position. I thought it'd be kind of cool since I already have dead ones. So, Alright guys, thanks so much for tuning in to check out my video um, showing the differences between some of these uh, yellow jackets slash cicada killer species that I have. Um, again, just a good rule of thumb, um, something I always think about and try to tell people when they are confused about what the differences are between certain um, yellow jackets, wasps, all that stuff, specifically between their subspecies of whatever they are, either yellow jacket, hornet, cicada killer, dump, mud dauber, um, in relation to them being wasps as well, is that all hornets are wasps. All yellow jackets are wasps. All mud doppers are wasps. But not all wasps are yellow jackets, are mud doppers, are hornets because there's, the wasp is a family name. Um, I use one expression in the comments. Someone asked um, what was the difference and how, how the terminology works. Um, is think of it like automobiles. Automobiles is the family, right? The subspecies of automobiles are trucks, cars, SUVs, right? So, an SUV, think of it like a bald-faced hornet being an SUV, well, some people call 
SUVs trucks. They're not really trucks. They might have truck components, but they're not really trucks because trucks are different. Well, it's the same with bald-faced hornets. Bald-faced hornets are kind of like a hornet, and that's why I was mistaken and mistakenly called a hornet, but it's not. So it's more like a yellow jacket because it is a yellow jacket. So that's just a good way of looking at it. Well, anyway, thanks for guys for watching, and I appreciate you guys coming back and checking out my videos. I appreciate the comments and people sharing their stories and sharing their feelings on my videos. Um, if you have any suggestions for future videos, please drop them in the comments. I'd like to address certain things if you guys are curious about or have questions about. Um, I'd like to make these specials as well. Um, I'm going to be having another video coming up. It's called uh, Who is the Hornet King? And just a little kind of thing about me and what I like to do and the different thing, aspects of my life here doing aside from the YouTube videos and just kind of give you a glimpse into my day to day in making these videos and um, what it kind of what goes into it because you guys get to see the fruit of the labor but you don't really get to see the labor. So um, I like to include that in my next video. Um, again, if this is your first time here, unfortunately this is kind of a goofy video for you guys to watch the first time. but. Um, Check out my other videos. I have updates coming out. I try to get a few out a week, and um, I have removals, just straight removals, where I have to kill an entire nest. Um, I also have relocations where I try to save the nest that I remove and bring it to a safe area to relocate it, and a lot of times that being at my house. Um, and then I film those nests so people can see how the nests um, acclimate to a new place and also how the nests are built. And that's kind of the big thing for me. I like seeing how different colonies make different nests because they are very different um, from nest to nest. They might be similar, but just the way that they, the way that they use their surroundings and the way that they use that the area that the nest is being placed in to make and make it and make it um, flourish is different from nest to nest. It's really interesting to see the differences and also see how they work. Anyhow, guys, if you're new to the channel and you haven't subscribed already, please consider doing so. I'd like to have um, new updates coming out all the time, so there's always new new content, and I try to make for good quality content. Um, and again, if you guys are returning subscribers, I appreciate you guys coming back and checking out and supporting my channel, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.